things have changed. <laughs> it's funny. I was actually rewatching that. And I was, that was Why? like that was like <laughs> podcast number fifty, and I've done like two hundred and fifty now. So it's just I look back. I'm like, oh, I'm so bad at asking questions back then. <clears throat> We'll be live in just a second. On Facebook also? All right. Well, we're live. Welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast, everybody. Today I have a special guest with me, Pete Souza. How you doing, Pete? I'm doing all right. Yeah? I'm sure you say that about everybody that you interview. Well, you're an extra special guest because you're a hard get these days, although you are traveling all over the, the country. Um, this is my last event, Robert. Is it? Really? Yeah, yeah. For the year? No, period. For, for in terms of the book tour, per se. Yeah. So speaking of, let, before we get started, I just want to make sure we know that this is the book that we're, we're here to talk about specifically, um, Shade, A Tale of Two Presidents. And uh, you have also, this is not your first book, uh, you also have um, President Reagan. You have The Rise of Barack Obama. And, of course, the big daddy of them all, Tevi. Ah, Obama, an intimate portrait. So I want to talk a lot about, um, obviously, your time in the White House, um, the book publishing process, because you know now you seem to be getting into that groove the last eight years, putting out a handful of them, although most recently putting them out. Um, but also, I know that you uh, are kind of humble and don't want to talk about your background, but I also want people to, to realize that you have a hell of a background in photography more than just being a White House photographer. So I will dabble into that, okay? Just a little bit. No, that's fine. Just, you know, we only have a limited amount of time. I know, so, like, I know, you know, I know, I know, I know. Don't eat it up on, you know. <laughs> on that so old stuff. So in my junior year, Boston University. <laughs> um, so before we get started, I just want to say thank you to Adorama, as always, for letting us use their event space. Um, you can uh, check out all the other events that, that go on uh, on their website uh, on Photo Brigade. We do podcast uh, panels and so on. Uh, thank you to Canon Professional Services and Temba Bags for all of your support. Uh, you guys rock. So on to Pete. Um, so Pete, what, is, what has it been like the last, uh, I don't know, how many months have you been touring around with the, with the book tour? Uh, just since uh, er early October. Uh -huh. So it hasn't been that bad. Hasn't been that bad. How many? How many spots? I'm going to start going through some of your Obama photos here. How many? Uh, how many uh, spots? Times? How many talks have you had so far? Uh, to be honest with you, I have no idea. Can't even. Can't even keep track. Somewhere these days. between probably 15 and 20. Between 15 and, and 20. And um, what? What I usually do is I usually do an hour presentation at a, at a big auditorium, mm -hmm. you know, a big humongous screen. And then do uh, do like a half hour of Q and A. Yeah, is it usually the same things that are asked each time, or do you do you find that uh, it really depends? Because I know you're also a, a photo are you like worried that you're going to ask me questions. Well, I don't. I'm, I don't want to ask the same questions <laughs> as, as everyone else, but I also yeah. No, I get some. Uh, the, the, I do get some uh, sort of uh, questions that I can almost count on in every. Uh, every event, but then I also get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, um, curveballs. So, really? Yeah. And you are you? Do you like? The I like those. I like. You like balls. the curveballs? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So last time we spoke, uh, we were actually at the White House, and I came for the Insta Meet, uh, which was the first annual, uh, I don't know, worldwide Insta Meet uh, that was going on at um, uh, the White House. And when we first met up, we sat down and we were chatting and the rest of these people that uh, were coming for this instant meet showed up and they completely surrounded you and they were pretty much in, in awe of you know, being around you. And you were at that point, it was funny, I was actually rewatching the podcast and noticing that at that point you had 190 some thousand followers um, at that point, which is quite a lot still to me. Um, but that's completely changed now. Now you have over two million followers, so th so things have drastically changed for you. And you and you had told me that while you were at the White House, you were kind of being pushed to get onto the social platforms. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, how you ended up getting starting to use the the social platforms more as a White House photographer, and how that sort of changed 
uh, things because that was very different from previous administrations? Well, it, 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 it first started with um, the Flickr photo stream. And uh, early on, the, um, the, our digital team had come to me Really, what had happened is they had, uh, there's this been tradition since the Nixon administration that the White House photo office hangs these 30 by 20 prints on the walls of the West Wing, called them jumbos. Uh -huh. And, I mean, Alice, who's here, helped curate those first few months of the pictures that we hung on the wall, and I think people were kind of blown away by uh -huh. it the access I had, the behind the scenes pictures, and the digital team came to me and, and right away, and they were like, we want the public to see these pictures and not just the staff who's sh giving their friends and family tours of the West Wing at night. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, the, I was, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say I was the holdout. Um, I finally agreed that we would post um, uh, monthly groups of pictures if we could curate which pictures were uh, made public, it's, I mean, it's a little disconcerting that you're like. Yeah, I'm sorry. We had a little technical. Okay. Dis 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 so issue. that's sort of how it got started with uh, with the, with the Flickr photo stream. I see. Um, okay, and uh, I'm 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 curious. Uh, do you do you keep up with what's going on in the current administration based off of what you were doing? in the past administration? Are you seeing more or less uh, photos being put out through social media? Um, you know, I'm just a, a, a viewer like you You are. What do you think? Well, I guess uh, I think that you did a pretty, pretty good job and it's a bit different. Yeah? No? Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing I've tried to do is, uh, uh, as you know, I'm very outspoken about critiquing the the current president but mm -hmm. um you know i i i feel that i i shouldn't um uh really say anything about the current white house photographer or uh, or the work they were doing uh, i think i owe her shayla mm -hmm. th that uh, amount of respect and so that's why I'm kind of dodging the question. Understood. I, I figured you might do that, but I, but I thought I'd ask anyway. Um, okay, so w w let's more talk about the, the book that we're here to talk about, Shade. When was it that you decided to start using the platform of Instagram to start throwing the, the shade? And, and I think at one point I saw you on social media saying that you didn't really know what that meant, right, at first, sh throwing shade. You kind of had to be told what that meant? Well, let's go back to uh, the end of the administration mm -hmm. when the Instagram account that I had uh, for the White House, because it was an official White House account, that had to be archived uh, and locked. Um, so you could actually go and look at everything that I posted while I was at the White House. So in, uh, t towards the last week there, I opened a uh, yeah, personal Instagram account. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, afternoon, meaning literally, you know, one minute after noon on January 20th, 2017, I was again a private citizen. Mm -hmm. And so I posted a couple pictures of um, President Obama, or for, well, then the former President Obama as he left Washington. Um, and flew to Palm Springs with him on uh, Air Force One because the outgoing president gets to use the plane one last time. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get I got home, because I, I flew out to Palm Springs, we you know dropped him off, and then we a few of us that were on the staff that flew out with him uh, got back on the plane, flew back to Washington. I ended up getting home at like five o'clock in the morning or something like that. So I sort of missed the whole controversy with the crowd size because mm. I was, uh, you know, busy, busy. <laughs> and um, so even though that's how the book starts out, my Instagram account, really the shade started a couple of days later when I had seen a picture of the newly rec redecorated Oval Office with those gold ornate curtains and 
I bet that was know, shocking to see the, the difference, right? Yeah, and, and the flags, you know, I mean, President Obama had an American flag and a presidential flag, and, you know, Trump has, like, I don't know, 18 flags or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why you need, like, five American flags and five presidential flags. But so I, I posted a picture of President Obama sitting on the Resolute desk, and uh, I think my caption was something like, kind of like the old curtains better, don't yeah. you think? Yep, yep, I remember and that. people sort of picked up on, you know, maybe my hidden double meaning. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's how I got started. And, uh, and that was also before you thought of the book, This Shade, because you had also you'd put out uh, the first book, uh, the intimate portrait um, of Obama. When was the when was it that you actually thought maybe this could be a book? Were people starting to reach out to you saying you ought to consider this? Was your publisher reaching out to you about this? Uh, you know, it's uh, yes and no. I mean, there was sort of vague reference to it, but I never thought that I would do it. And then if something lasts, well, actually this spring, because it really pissed me off. Mm -hmm. about something he had done. I don't even remember what it was because there were so many, <laughs> you know, daily things that happened. Sure. And because I was trying to keep a high road and I wasn't really talking about my Instagram feed. I wanted it to speak for itself. And then I got to the point where, you know what, this uh, this can't go on and I, I need to, you know, raise, raise my voice a little more. And... Um, uh, you know, contacted my my book agent, sent him an email, and I said, I think I want to do this book. And uh, just by sheer coincidence, that same day, he received an email from the publisher saying the exact same thing. Yeah. And so the next day, we, you know, decided to do it. Have you had um, any issues with with? The throwing of the shade, like um, obviously, there's a lot of this is a divisive uh, time in our in our country, and I'm sure you get a lot of hate mail and hate comments uh, as well as uh, pro shade comments. Um, have you had any issues dealing with that? Your 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 sudden uh, Instagram celebrity that you are now. Um, I mean, issues in the sense that yeah, I get a lot of hate mail, and not a lot, but I get a lot of hate mail, and a few. You know, I've had a few. Uh, death threats, but they're you know they're, I, I I haven't really taken them seriously until, you know the 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 pipe bombing uh, incident where uh, some crazy guy was sending sending these pipe bombs around. in the mail to critics of, of Trump, and um, I mean I was fairly certain that nobody knew my home address, but I made sure that the publisher was aware to be you know to not open any mail that would come to the publisher in my name yeah uh you know so those sorts of things H has there been any like for instance did you worry about raising your voice and 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 being a critic of the current administration uh because of your your past work with the past administration or administrations Worried in what sense? Just worried about, I guess, um, in the same way that you're not wanting to necessarily comment about the, the current administration's photographers, right? The same way that the, the president tech usually doesn't talk about the previous administration, although President Obama is now. Um, were you worried about what you might say might get you in trouble or, or in any capacity like that? Well, I was, I was worried if I didn't speak up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm worried as a citizen. Uh, I, you know, I think I had a unique voice, uh, having worked for, you know, both a Democrat and a Republican president. Um, and, and as I like to tell people, if, you know, Jeb Bush or Mitt Romney or John McCain or Hillary Clinton or John Kasich or whoever had been elected president, I wouldn't be doing this. Because all, all of those people that I, that I mentioned, uh, I think respect other people and would have respected the office of the, the presidency. And I don't feel that way about, you know, Trump at all. Mm -hmm. I, I think he disrespects the office of the presidency. I think he doesn't give a shit about other people. Um, and and I, 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 it just got to the point where I didn't feel like I could uh, hold my tongue any, any longer. Well, I don't think that you've been uh, the target of any of his nasty tweets or name calling yet. Do you, do you you think that you might be at some point? Well, as you know, when we were putting this book together, I was uh, 
saying to my publisher, I said, are you sure the, you know, the lawyers are okay with me using his tweets? Because, you know, I use his tweets. And President uh, Trump's tweets. President Trump's tweets, uh-huh. which are public record. Sure. Um, although, you know, he, just again today, he deleted a tweet, which, you know, according to, the, according to the Presidential Records Act, you're not supposed to be able to do that. Right. But Along he, with your photos, right? You're not yeah, allowed to right. delete photos. So, um, uh, what now? Is you, you, uh, you made me lose my train of thought there. Um, so we were, <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about being being the target of his? Uh... Yeah, yeah. So so when I was talking to my publisher about whether we were on solid ground legally to use his tweets in this book, you know, they're like, yeah, sure, that it's not going to be a problem at all. And I was like, well, what if what if Trump sues me? And the publisher went, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be, be great for my promotion. <laughs> Did they have your back at least? Yeah. The publishers. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that is a, a, a worry, you know, that you have a, a president that's willing to, to sue citizens. I mean, that's kind of unheard of. I don't know that he really sues citizens. I think he just says he does. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, did, did, did you, before uh, publishing the books, did you, um, did, like, for instance, does President Obama have uh, an advanced copy? Did he give his feedback at all? Do you not... Well, I, I'll tell two funny stories. One, the, the, the first book, Obama and Internet Portrait, um, it was about, uh, you know, two or three weeks before publication. Mm-hmm. And um, we were sending out advanced copies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had, that matter of fact, the first copy I got was FedEx to me in Seattle. I was in Seattle for something. And I was at her, I was staying at a friend's house, and I left the book with her. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> subsequently, she had she had a, con- a phone conversation the next week with President Obama, <laughs> and she was telling him about the book, which he did not have a copy of. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. So he was quite pissed at me. Oh that, really? That you know other people had a copy of the book before he did. Then on this book, the Shade book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made a, a decision not to uh, show him the book at all or even tell him I was doing the book mm-hmm. because I didn't want anybody to think that somehow um, he was involved or directing me in this endeavor. And so I waited till the, the last possible minute to give him this book, and he understood when I, you know, when I finally gave it to him actually he didn't even get it till after it was um uh it released but um he he, he understood mm-hmm. my, my reasoning on on that so. yeah um it, you know it's kind of interesting i was when i was looking up your books on amazon i typed in your name and one of the of course shade was at the top of the organic search but there was a sponsored post i don't know if it's because they're using some of your photos within it or they're just using your name as a, as a tag to try to put their stuff at the top. But your photos are essentially public domain, are they not? Does that mm-hmm. mean that anybody can also make books w- with your Yeah, your I mean, there's a guy, I don't, I don't want to tell you the title of the book because I don't want you to go and yeah. buy it, but there's a guy that has a, <laughs> has a photo book ad on, on President Obama, and um, I think all but like 10 pictures in the book are, my, are mine. Really? Yeah. Which is kind of a shitty thing to do. But, That's what I was know. thinking. You know, I was He's curious. He's allowed to do it legally. So. Yeah. Well, I guess anybody. But don't, can, buy don't, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> we're not promoting. We're not promoting that book at all. Um, okay. So, like I said, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your time before uh, President Obama, and uh, specifically about your time with President Reagan, and maybe to contrast a little bit. Uh, what it was like in those days um, covering uh, President Reagan versus now, obviously, analog versus digital, um, n- no internet versus, any, you know, all, all of these things are different now. Can you just give me a little background, A, how you got involved uh, with President Reagan and your um, position there? Because it was slightly different than with Obama. Yeah, so my, my connection uh, to the Reagan White House was through Carol McKay, who was then Carol Greenewald, and she had been the photo director at the Kansas City Star 
Uh, I had worked in Kansas for a couple of years. So I, I knew her professionally. Matter of fact, interviewed with her for a job when she was at the Star. Mm-hmm. She didn't hire me. but um, So they had an opening. Michael Evans was the chief photographer. And uh, they, they had an opening for somebody to work under Michael. And Carol recommended me. And that's sort of how it got started. So I, and, and I didn't join the uh, Reagan uh White House until June of uh, 1983, so you know, midway through his midway first through. term. Okay, and um, you were part of a, a staff at that part point. of a staff, so, and you know, Michael already was, uh, you know, to be quite honest, I think it was um, was bored of the day to day coverage, and so relinquished a lot of that to to us. And he was also embarking on this uh, ambitious portrait project where he was doing portraits of people throughout the administration. Oh, that's cool. Uh, which ended up becoming a big exhibit at the Corcoran Gallery. Um, and then Michael left after the first term, and they didn't have, they didn't replace him. And so we, we would kind of like rotate in terms of, you know, the behind the scenes stuff uh, during the second term. Okay. And, and wh- how about the process being different back then versus now in the digital age? Obviously, I don't think shooting. the process was any different at all in terms of what the, the primary function was to document the, the presidency for history. Right. So, you know, the only difference was you're doing it on film and you weren't doing it on digital. Uh, it was also different in that um, uh, the, 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 the access wasn't Near, you know, nearly as good uh, during the Reagan administration as it was for me during the Obama administration. Do you mean specifically for you or, or in general? Uh, I think in general, yeah. And, I, you know, and quite frankly, you know, the guy was in his 70s and he didn't do as much as President Obama. What, uh, you know, President Obama was sort of like... Working all the time. Yeah, you know. Uh, what what would you say? Um, and also, I should I should mention we're looking at these photos. You you documented his you know final days until he was buried. Um, were you tasked by the family to do this? Were you shooting? Who were you shooting for when you did this? Yeah, no, I, I uh, Mrs. Reagan asked me to to do the funeral. Um, I sort of knew it ahead of time. You know, it's sort of one of those things that you know you don't really talk about but there's a you know there was as there was for president bush 43 there's a there's a you know there's a playbook in terms of for the whole funeral the logistics right that that is mapped out years and years in advance and so so i knew that i was going to be uh asked to do uh the funeral whenever you know it 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 happened Mm -hmm. Uh, okay so looking back at uh your your time I guess in in all the pre- shooting all of these different presidents, um, what what gives you the most pride in in what you've done? Is there certain or, or I mean, is, are there certain things that you would shoot that gave you that you enjoyed doing the most uh, that you thought was most important to his, for history's sake, um, or was it did you prefer you know being on vacation and shooting? You know what I mean? Like there's different things that you've shot every day, all day. Uh, a lot of things that were really boring, I'm sure. For for President Obama, I certainly um, had access to all the different compartments of his life. So whether he was, you know, in the Situation Room or with his family or, you know, on the basketball court or, or, or whatever. So for me, it was documenting him as a human being uh, uh, who happened to be president. Right. Um, and I sort of never tried to lose cited the fact that no matter what he was doing, he was still the President of the United States, and that uh, it was, uh, you know, I had a unique opportunity to create this um, archive of him that will hopefully last, you know, for generations, unless, Mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, some comet hit. (laughs) <laughs> well, servers or something like that. <laughs> well, that's another thing is is one of these things I've heard is that um, we ought to start uh, backing up our photos in analog form because someday there might be a digital issue where 
for some reason you can't. But you've done that with these photos. Is there something like that that's done in terms of the archives for what, what you've done? Do you guys make prints at all? I mean, one thing that's interesting, like for the Reagan Library, um, of course, those we shot all ne uh, negative film, mostly color negative film. I shot a lot of black and white negative film, and um, and you know now they're they're having to digitize those. That's an enormous undertaking. I can't even imagine. Yeah. And the, is that something that the is it is it the current administration that does or is it the, like the no no it's the, so it's the, so the it's at it's being done at the the Reagan Library in uh, in in California uh -huh. and of course their scanner's not the best scanner in the world uh -huh. right um, so it's a little frustrating to see some of the scans that that, that you know. Is it interesting for you at all to, do they end up scanning images that you'd forgotten you've taken? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm doing this exhibit that opens in uh, February or March, I forget. It's like a tra traveling exhibit. It's it's uh, of Reagan and Obama. So it's like 28 photos of each. So I was able to go through, you can go through all my pictures now online uh, at, at the Reagan Library. Uh, you can see all the, all the proof sheets, the mm -hmm. original proof sheets, and then... Um, so I, 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 I didn't have time to go through all of them, but I sort of knew the ones I wanted to go after. But, it, yeah, no, it's fascinating. I mean, I found this picture of, of him on the – President Reagan on the South Lawn with his arm around this little 8-year-old girl. And I'm looking at this girl, and I'm like, holy sh – that's Drew Barrymore. You know? <laughs> really? Right after – E.T. Uh, or ET something? Came out. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting to see, yeah. you know, some of those pictures. Uh, um I was trying to find pictures of Reagan with Donald Trump and because he apparently came to a state dinner or something. And I found the picture, but it was but it was one of my colleagues and not. Oh, not I see. Mine. That, yeah, it would have been nice to have in the been the shooter exhibit. on that one. Yeah. Well, what's the what's what's your perspective? Like, how's your perspective changed uh, in the past? I mean, you spent essentially 10 years covering uh, President Obama really in depth. Uh, White House, and now you're in, in the regular world. Um, what's your perspective? How, what's the perspective change for you? Um, I, I remember when we were talking previously, when we did our podcast at the White House, you're like, well, we'll, we'll see. I've got too much to think about before I can even imagine what it's going to be like afterwards, because you still had two more years left or a year and a half left or something. I mean, in some ways, I sort of feel that I, you know, the last two years have been. Uh, <laughs> tacked on to the uh to 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 my uh time at the white house because i spent so much time last year putting together the you know the first book mm -hmm. and you know my my thinking was i was going to be done mm -hmm. that was it that was the end of that chapter of my life and then you know we elect this carnival barker as president and um, I, you know, I, I, I've um, uh, become, uh, as, as this book shows, very, very outspoken and mm -hmm. um, sort of uh, trying to compare uh, the, the guy that I work for with, uh, with the current guy. And so it's sort of hard to like, I, ha I haven't really yet cut the tie. Yeah. So maybe today's the day. Maybe today's the day. Maybe the last time I'm making you talk about this. Yeah. This is one of um, probably the most intense photos that uh, I could imagine you've taken or been in the room for. Um, and we talked about it a bit on, on your last podcast. Um, I'm, I'm curious, uh, has, w could you imagine being in this situation with the current administration? What, what it would be like versus what it was like here for you? I'm not going to comment about that. I, I have no idea what that would be like. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, but give me a little bit of background on, on this photo. I know you've talked about this photo a million times, but is it still the most in, intense forty minutes of your life? Uh, I mean, it was pretty intense. It was probably more intense for them than it was for me. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I, I sort of like to tell people that here you've got the most powerful people in the executive branch of our government all in the this little tiny room at the same time mm -hmm. and yet there's nothing they can do they're like sort of helpless i mean they had made the decision in the days and weeks before this to send uh these special forces into harm's way 
and now they're just, they can only observe and they can't affect the outcome and and uh in one way or another funny story is uh the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff admiral mike mullen who is standing in uniform behind the president i was uh when i was working on my shade book mm-hmm. Uh, with uh, Yo Cuomo here in New York. I was taking the train home one night, late one night. It was like a Friday night around 11 o'clock. And I'm on the train reading the book, and out of nowhere, somebody comes and, like, sits down right next to me, like halfway through the train ride. Mm-hmm. And it's like I didn't think there was anybody else on the on the train at all, mm-hmm. and it was Mike Mullen. <laughs> and I hadn't seen him um, for a while. I mean, he... Uh, his term as J- chairman of the Joint Chiefs was up not long after this picture was taken. Uh, and he told me one new detail that I didn't know. Oh, really? Uh, so you can't see it, but uh, he and Biden were both had rosary beads wrapped around their fingers. And I later knew that. Uh, but the new detail that he added to me was when the raid ended it and, and they said Geronimo KIA meant uh, bin Laden was dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody stood up, a couple of people shook hands, and Biden uh, went to put his rosary beads back in his pocket. And Mullen told me this. He said, he said to Biden, he said, I got 20 guys that have got an hour and a half helicopter ride through a country we're not supposed to be in to go back to Afghanistan. This is the most dangerous part of the mission. So put that rosary bead back around your finger. Wow. Which I thought was pretty, yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing you don't think about that danger and how deep into the territory they actually are. That's wild. Um, so uh, there's a blurred out photo here. That's obviously a top secret document that we had to blur out. I don't know if it's still top secret or if it ever gets declassified. And I'm sure that there's a lot of photos that you've taken that might have classified information in them. Um, do you... Um, I guess I, I guess you still have to keep secrets. I mean, like, are there are there certain things that you can't talk about um, from being sure, in? sure, yeah. Like what? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> nice try, Robert. <laughs> Thought I'd just slip it in. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, like the little green men. Like the little green men. Yeah, of, yeah. of course. Yeah. Do you know they speak they speak Pakistani? They do. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. This is yeah. something. This is this is breaking news. Yeah. Okay. Wow. No, I'm just like it's yeah. not. You know, this is not true. I'm oh, it's not. It. Okay. Thank you. I, didn't, I was confused there for just a second. Just messing with you, Robert. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm gonna. If you could take off the slideshow, because I want to quickly go through and talk a little bit about um, your your past. Like I said. Um, dive a little bit into your archives, and show some of the work that you did over the years for newspapers. Um, nice little, you, so you worked for the Chicago Tribune for many years as a, the bureau photographer, right? Which means that you covered anything. Washington that, Bureau. Washington, I'm sorry, Washington Bureau. Of course, none of these pictures that you're showing are from the Tribune, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm sorry, this is, this is going through your old, yeah, uh, yeah. just everything, your yeah. archives, right? Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your background and working for the Chicago Tribune and and what like first of all this is a beautiful image I was going through your archives I just think this is truly beautiful nice depth um, what it was like uh, covering I guess politics well, I mean, mostly so in uh, so in in January of ninety eight I took a job as a Washington based photographer for the Chicago Tribune and the uh, understanding was that I would um, be doing. Uh, stories with some of the national writers around the country and then doing it, trying to do a few international stories every year. And then if you remember what happened in 1998, matter of fact, I was on my first foreign trip. I was in Turkey when the Lewinsky scandal first broke. And I spent most of that first year sort of like covering Clinton, which I didn't really want to be doing, but I understood it was, you know, it was the story of 1998. Mm-hmm. Um, but then subsequently I did, um, you know, a lot of stories around the country and a lot of international stories with our foreign correspondents. Um, and then when I was in town, I would cover stuff on the Hill and, and at the White House. 
Yeah. It, sort of interesting story. I was chatting with my older brother who worked at the time for KRT, and he had mentioned that he had gone with you to a Pope John Paul. Did you... Do you remember covering Pope John Paul? I didn't cover Pope John Paul, actually. No? No. In, in Baltimore? I did not. Oh, okay. No. Well, maybe my brother's got it wrong then. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, and then also going around uh, the world, so what, what brought you to Afghanistan when you went? Well, you know, I mean, we, we had a war. Well, the war, but I mean, who were well, you Well, so uh, I was working for the Tribune, and, and um, you know, right after 9-11, we started, the U.S. started this air campaign. Um, and the people that were at the, all the journalists that were at the Pakistan, Pakistan border were not able to get into the country. And then I think it was Peter Baker from, the, from uh, I think he was then with the Washington Post, or I sort of forget, maybe it was with the New York Times, um, got into Afghanistan through the north, through Tajikistan. Um, and so we figured we'd try it too. So uh, a correspondent and I... Uh, traveled to Tajikistan, eventually made our way across the border, and then took us about a week to get into uh, a, a place where we were just right outside of Kabul. Uh, we had to go over, take a horse over the Hindu Kush mountains, and, uh, and, and our timing was, uh, was pretty unbelievable in that uh, we got to just outside of Kabul about four days before uh, uh, before the final, by the Northern Alliance did their final assault, assault mm -hmm. backed by U.S. Air campaign, and and so we were there when uh, when Kabul fell, which was you know that that was the scene. This was the that scene was the right day, here. Yeah. What was uh, I, I'm I'm curious because I, I know I have a lot of photographer friends and folks that I've talked to on the podcast. Was this your like first and only time that you've covered war? Or have you done this before? Well, I had been on the edge of war in, in Kosovo in, uh, was that 99 maybe? And um, uh, yeah, so, and this, you know, I'm not a, a war photographer and I actually never thought I would be, you know, this close to the to the front lines, but you know, stuff happens and then all of a sudden you're, you're there and when, 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 when stuff starts to go down. Did you know at that point that it was like well, this is probably the last time I'm going to do this? Did you think because well, I mean, you know, be yeah, scary. we had I, I um, uh, you know, I had a couple of close calls and uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the guy. He was he was a stringer with the AP then. Uh, subsequent, uh, I think he works for Getty now, but he was uh, he was with me for a while on this road and um, uh, he had a bulletproof vest on. I did not. Um, things got so hairy that he actually left because he, he thought it was too dangerous. And he ended up getting shot in the back oh my with gosh. a sniper bullet. But his vest saved, you know, saved his life. And then, you know, and I saw him a couple of days later, uh, you know, and if that had been me, I, I you know, I would have been gone killed yeah. because I didn't have a, a vest on. Um, all right. So I'm thinking that... Um, I'd love, if, I don't know if any of you have any particular questions. I know some people told me that they do. I think we should give Alice the first question. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, let me give you a microphone before you, before you do it. He'll hand it over. So Alice was the White House photo editor for the first two years or two and a half years? Two years. Yeah. Um, so January. I hired Alice away from Time Magazine. Okay. So I, the, my question is just the, the little thing you said about um, this person who's done a, bo a book with the your images. Yeah. I thought, because we would put that language in in each picture, you're not allowed to, to use these pictures in any commercial way. They, they can only be used in an editorial context. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more, it, it, it's th that was more when um, he was president. And now I think the issue is if um, I think a book or a magazine or anything like that is okay, what you couldn't do um, is, you know, use a picture of President Obama wearing an L.L. Bean jacket and then uh, have L.L. Bean advertise. Mm. Uh, somebody you, I remember did. Yeah. Yeah, somebody did do that. They, they they put a billboard up in Times Square, 
with a jacket that he was it was I don't know that it was one of my pictures it was uh, was it yeah. and it was him wearing a jacket like in Maine or something and the company whose jacket he was wearing put a billboard up in Times Square I think Kathy Rumler was the White House counsel and it was so much fun to watch her uh, get it down it was down within a day that's how uh, uh, the the billboard was the down billboard within, was down wow. within a day because you don't mess with Kathy Rumler. Was it difficult editing all the photos that he was taking? I mean, was he shooting just tons and tons and tons? That was my job. <laughs> you were getting paid to do it. Well, I mean, I have to say that, uh, you know, one of the things is I, you know, in, in terms of putting together Obama in an intimate portrait, I wanted to put together, um, you know, my take on his presidency. Um, and... I, I remember when I, I had this idea that I would do the book in sections. So I'd, there'd be a family section, there'd be, you know, dealing with a crisis section, there would be, um, you know, world leaders. And I remember Alice, when I sort of showed her what I was doing, she said to me that one of the great things about looking through my pictures is like you, you know, you see, you see him day in and day out he's dealing with this really you know stressful meeting and then somebody's kid pops in for five minutes and he lights up for a minute or you know one of his daughters drops by and she had said if I did the book that way you would miss all these emotions um, you know th throughout the presidency so you know basically because she and Jen Poggi said the exact same thing even though they didn't talk to each other the way I should do the book, that I ended up doing the book chronologically. And I think it actually worked to do it that way. And that shows the importance of, of having a good editor, too. Did you, uh, I mean, obviously you had a whole team, and you obviously worked on your own photos on sensitive subjects, I'm sure. But did you ever think, oh, man, I'm glad that this person went through my photos, rather than um, having missed it yourself? Because I'm, I get in a, you know, I tag things that I, and I yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, I think that, uh, I think Alice would say that I probably argued with her a lot about what was the best picture, and, um, you know, and I think sometimes she was right, sometimes maybe I was right, I don't know. <laughs> you know, photography is a subjective medium. I feel that because I was the guy in the room when it happened, that I had a better sense of what was the appropriate picture, I don't know. The, the difficult thing in putting this book together was that very thing is, you know, in the, in the end, it was just a guy, I had to go with my, I hate to say this because this is how, you know, Trump runs its presidency, but I had to go with my gut in terms of how to put this book together. And, um, you know, I asked Alice for some input, some Jen Poggi, the designer, but in the end, you know, I had to make the decisions myself because it was sort of, this, you know, this is my book. I wanted yeah. it to be my, I look at, at, at his presidency. Can I say, since this is a photo crowd, do you, can you say what the president told you about the pacing of the book? Yeah, yeah. So it was so funny because I had gone in. Well, another thing is on, the, on that first book, I didn't want to let him see the book. And I didn't want to see him, you know, I didn't want him. We're talking I about I didn't this want, one, yeah? I didn't want this to be his book. I want this to, this to be my book. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he didn't know which pictures I was going to put in. You know, he had a, he, he sort of saw most of the pictures that I did all eight years. So it wasn't like, you know, but I mean, it wasn't like he was involved in, um, and, and which ones were going to be in the book. The only thing I, I said to him is I, I'll show you any pictures of the girls that I want to include. Cause I thought I, owe, I owed him that, um, but so I was, uh, I had gone in to see him, mo mostly to make a pitch to get him to write the introduction mm -hmm. to the book. And he's like, well, how's it going anyway? <laughs> I go, well, you know, it's challenging to take, you know, two million photos and get it down to 325. And then he's like, well, I mean, you've got to ch choose the aesthetic over the narrative. Oh, really? And I'm like, <laughs> what, now you're the photo editor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, that is interesting. I mean, because this is a beautiful book, and and when 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 you finally showed it to him, did you get immediate feedback? 
Um, yeah, so I showed the, I, 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 uh, I, you know, since he called me on the carpet, I, I brought some books to him and left them with him. And it was probably like, a, you know, so I didn't hear from him for a week. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <laughs> and then uh, I uh, had gone to Chicago. Um, I, I hadn't really photographed him at all last year and then th- th- he had asked me to to go to the inaugural obama summit in uh chicago and so i flew into chicago for that and the morning of the summit uh i was in the gym at the hotel and um you know and he l- later uh comes into the gym i'm on the elliptical you know and he like he sees me and he walks right over to me and he said you know he and, he and michelle really liked the book so Good. So you yeah. got the official endorsement. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Wonderful. Does anybody else have any other questions they'd like to ask? Okay. We'll get make your way to you, Fred. <laughs> Go ahead. A uh, couple of questions. One, did you have to get security clearance to work uh, this closely with the president? Uh, yeah. I like to tell people that I had a higher security clearance than Jared Kushner. <laughs> 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 Does he have one? No, no, I had, I had, the, you know, I had top secret uh, SEI clearance. Yeah, I still have it actually. So hmm. Trump hasn't taken it away from you yet. I kind of, you know, I, I kind of hope he does because then it'll create some news and. You know. <laughs> it's all promo these days. And then uh, my other question is, how, how did you, uh, how do you get people comfortable, um, constantly being around them? Uh, you have so many different. You know, aside from the president or presidents with Reagan as well, um, and then other staff uh, constantly shooting in different situations, um, was, there, was it a familiarity that uh, made them comfortable with you, or is there other things that you did just to sort of blend in to be able to get these images? Well, I mean, I used, uh, you know, at the time, uh, if you go back to 2009, I, I felt the quietest camera was, um, you know, the digital cameras was the was the Canon uh, 5D, I guess it was then the Mark II. The Nikon was just too loud. The Leica, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm borrowing a Leica M10P now, which is, you know, a great camera. But at the time, the Leica M8 was just a terrible camera. I don't know how else to say it. So that was never even going to, I was never going to use that. So I, I chose the Canon because it was quiet. And um, so, you know, and I didn't shoot rapid fire or I didn't use a flash for, you know, the documentary stuff. Um, and just, um, you know, even though I shot 2 million photos, I didn't really think I shot a lot. I mean, maybe Alice thinks I shot a lot, but, <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't like I was, um, you know, pushing down on the shutter like that. Um, so just, you know, and then, you know, it took him a, a few few months to get used to, uh, you know, me always being there. And then once once people saw that he didn't have any problem with me being in the room, then, you know, who is, why is someone else going to question me if he thinks it's okay, so. Hmm. I just want to say for the, the shooting a lot, he, he, Pete doesn't shoot a lot, actually. And I have edited, have the privilege of editing a lot of photographers, and I would say Pete is the most precise photographer next to Jim Noctway that I've ever <laughs> photo edited, which is... Can I like, uh, can I, that, that's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's your next... Uh, <laughs> I like that... <laughs> On your website. I, I, I think she's giving me too much credit, but uh, that's, yeah. Because I, I, yeah, anyway, but thank you for saying that. Dory? Hi. Um, so back when Obama was first running to be, you know, the Democratic nominee, and I'm a woman and I have two daughters, and people were giving me a hard time at first because I was um, supporting Obama, and I said, that, well, I agreed with him more in his policies, but one of the things that I remember saying, and so I wanna thank you for this, is I remember saying that I couldn't wait to see great photographs 
of his children in the office with the presidential seal in the same way that we saw Kennedy's kids, and that those pictures alone would change the world. So I just want to thank you. Yeah, you know, I mean, the uh, I have to I have to you know really give kudos to Sasha and Malia because for the most part, um, you know, I try to honor their privacy when it when it was warranted uh but the, but they were I, I you know they were very good they understood you know my role and um uh you know and there's a lot of a lot of pictures that as as alice is very aware that that you know have never been made um public that some you know that someday may the meaning of 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 the girls I go ahead um, the, the, one of the, some of the interesting photos that came out of the White House this week were um, the president in Arlington Cemetery with uh, in the rain. I couldn't help think when, when seeing those photos that um, this was kind of a stage propaganda kind of shoot where, where this was the president's response to Obama's photos uh, uh, in the cemetery mourning vets in the rain, and the president seemed to like want his own set. Better and, late than never. And it's. Um, <laughs> So my, my question is that has this, I'm sure this happens all the time with this administration, but has there ever been situations where you were asked uh, to stage a photo shoot or for um, propaganda or spin purposes to manage the perception of a situation or an event? Uh, no, there was, there was one situation where um, I, I felt that the press pool and not me should be making the photo. Uh, this was after the BP oil spill, and um, they had cleaned up the Gulf Coast, and the Obamas, Michelle and, and, and the president were going to, uh, and Sasha, because Malia was at camp, they were going to go to the Gulf Coast for a weekend to try to draw attention to the tourism industry, which, you know, that's the kind of thing you do as president. And uh, President Obama and, and Sasha were going to uh, jump in the water. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, we, we ended up releasing a photo from that. I felt that the press pool should have uh, been the ones to do that, but I get it is – that they didn't want uh, pictures, they didn't want the press to get pictures of Sasha walking into the water in her bathing suit, right? Because that would have, you know, and, and so with me, um, even if I shot those pictures, the picture that we were gonna release would be the ones where they were in the water and you didn't see, you know, a, I forget how old she was and 11 year old girl in a bikini if you know what i mean thank you here bring it bring the microphone up this way you wanna okay that's got a question i'm curious about your opinion about what happened during the reagan administration with the press office um so many of the things that we now take for granted with you know like the staged photo ops and the sort of theatrical um, display of the presidency, especially in campaigning, happened with people like Mike Deaver and the press office then. And so much of, I mean, I, to me, that, that's more of a visual legacy that's, that we now see with Trump doing the same kind of, you know, like hangar events the same way that, that Reagan did you know, like years ago. And I'm curious, because you, you see it from, you know, two different administrations, but you also see it from behind the scenes rather than just the way most people observe it, you know, like in the newspapers and on television. This, I mean, this could be a whole podcast, really, talking about this. No, I mean, I'm serious. I'm serious. So, you know, it's interesting watching the photographer's work meaning the, the news photographers work during the, the Reagan administration. And, and you, gotta, you gotta really go back in time where 
you no know, pun intended, where the, the uh, for still photographs, Time and Newsweek sort of dominated the landscape, right? And if Time or Newsweek was doing a special story on the president that week, or, you know, they, they would ask for um, time, meaning like a 15 minute time. And, and, and this is when the magazines made the, the, uh, the venture into, you know, everything has to be in color and lit. And so the, the Time or Newsweek would assign a photographer to light something of him and make it look real. You know, him sitting at the desk, him working on a State of the Union address, and it was all staged. And it was, there were lights set up, and um, that was just the way it was uh, done on, on, you know, on both sides, where, where that's what the magazine wanted, and that's what the administration wanted too. Um, today, what I see in terms of, I don't see that kind of access at all. What I see is um, a reality show where, um, you know, the president has a meeting with Kanye West and the entire press corps comes into the Oval Office and is not there for 30 seconds. They're there for the whole time. You know, so, so it becomes sort of like a little bit of a reality show or a cabinet meeting. The press is in there the whole time, and for an hour, every cabinet um, secretary tells Trump how great he is in front of the, you know, the press cameras. So those are, you know, to me, those are the, the difference between, like, the Ray administration and the... Uh, um, the current administration. Now with Obama, there was criticism that I was doing too good of a job in getting these behind the scenes <laughs> moments. <laughs> and uh, you know, President Obama did not like the reality show part of the presidency, you know, where the way that, you know, Trump does. And there was uh, uh, individual photographers who would get access for, I mean, Cali Shell for the first 100 days had incredible access. Um, and, you know, you could, Ashley Gilbertson did something for New York Times Magazine, uh, the Chicago Tribune, the Louisville Courier Journal, you know, the individual newspaper photographers or magazine photographers would come in and basically hang out with me for a day and get, you know, sort of real pictures. That didn't, that still kind of pissed off the White House press corps because, they wanted all, they all wanted to be in there. Well, you can't, if you all go in there, it's gonna be like it is with Trump, where it's kind of like a reality show atmosphere. So, I mean, we could, this is like, you know, a really interesting topic to me. And having covered a little bit of Clinton and, and Bush 43 as an outsider, mm. you know, I think I have a unique perspective on, but, you know, we could go on for another half hour about this. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll change the topic a little bit. Where, where do you draw inspiration? Like, um, are there f certain photographers that you have looked up to or seen their work? Or is it previous White House photographers? Did you look into their work more before you started again? It's all from Bergman. You know, he's my inspiration. <laughs> um, there, there are so many. There are so many photographers that, you know, I draw inspiration from. I think in terms of uh, White House photography, Yoshi Okamoto, um, who was LBJ's photographer and, and really was the first official White House photographer to truly document a presidency for history. You know, before that, it was sort of hit or miss. Uh, but, but, you know, Yoshi, had, he covered everything um, and had, you know, a very unique individual in LBJ as a subject. So his pictures to me are, uh, you know, the, 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 the ones that I, I, he set the bar so high and was such a great photographer, had such incredible access that I think, you know, all of us that have followed in that job have, have you know, tried to, uh, you know, reach his bar. Um, he, matter of fact, I was just at the, uh, next door to the LBJ library last week because they're doing this documentary thing. 
And I was asking, like, I don't, like, no, no one's ever done a book on Okamoto, which is pretty incredible. Like, doing it. Oh, somebody's they are? doing it. Oh, dang. Dang. Now? I was going to, I was going <laughs> to, I wanted to be the guy to do it. All you got to do is pull him from the archive. <laughs> um, but, I mean, his, his, his work is just, you know, really incredible. I hope Yo's doing the design of that book. Um, and what, what was it specifically just the, the access that, that he had that, that you were so enamored with? Or was it more his style or approach or? It was all of that. I mean, it, now, you know, there's a huge difference between Barack Obama and, and Lyndon Baines Johnson in terms of the kind of individual they were. I mean, you know, Johnson was kind of a crude guy and you sort of see that in some of the, some of the pictures. But I, you know, I, I, I know LBJ, I mean, I know Okamoto's work so well that there was this film that Brian Cranston played, LBJ, that was on HBO yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. And I watched that film and I was like, it was as if I was watching Okamoto's pictures come to life. Mm. And, 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 you know, and I've read a lot about LBJ and I was like, wow. And then at the end of the film, uh, before the credits start uh, rolling, they just started doing like a slideshow of Okamoto's pictures. And it was like, wow, that's where they really got the inspiration from this film in a lot of ways. It'll be interesting to see what inspiration might be drawn from some of your photos in the future. You know, like what photos of yours might literally come to life. Cause you don't have, there's no like Obama movies out or anything yet, right? Well, Mm, no, but I mean, I think people know him pretty well. Yeah, I guess he's a little bit different these yeah. days. He's he's been out and about. Um, one thing that we that we talked about in the previous podcast was when you got that call um, <clears throat> to become, you know, they were you know sussing you out for <clears throat> being the White House photographer, and you had asked, you had more demanded, well, if I'm going to be doing this, I need all access. This isn't going to be one of these things where, you know, you're bossing me around. Can you give me a little bit of background on, on that call? And also when you got, when you got that call, you were, we didn't mention it at Ohio university uh, as a professor, which you are still professor to Meredith. Yeah. I mean, I, I ended up leaving the tribune in, um, you know, the middle of 2007 cause the tribune had done a few things that I just couldn't be a part of anymore. And, and so I, only, I actually only covered the first three months of Obama, the early part of Obama's uh, campaign. And then, you know, as a freelancer, I covered a few events here and there. Um, and I remember after he was elected, uh, his closest aide was Robert Gibbs. I mean, he became the press secretary, but really was his close, closest, closest aide. Um, and I remember I sent a, uh, a uh, uh, email to Gibbs about a week after the elect after the uh, uh, the election. So it was like second week of November mm -hmm. of '08, and my all my email said was Robert, I'm interested. That's all I said. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, cause I just want to let them know, you know, that, that, I, that I, I would be interested in doing this. And then, uh, it, it, it th that December, you know, there's co some conversations back and forth. And then fi finally Gibbs called me, uh, on a, a Sunday night, the day before classes started for the winter quarter. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he said, calling on behalf of the president-elect, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, Robert, if I'm going to do this, I need to have access to everything. And he just said, yeah, the president-elect gets it. That was, th that was the extent of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll be there in a couple of days. Was that the official, like, you're hired? Or, or did you have to actually come in and interview or something as well? Um, no, I, that, that was it. That was it? Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, I'm sure that... Uh, there was no Senate confirmation for the White House. <laughs> you know. I, I, yeah, I don't know the process of that. So, I mean, obviously not yeah. Senate, Senate confirmation. No, you go through a security clearance, but they, they grant you like a, I guess it's called temporary security clearance mm -hmm. while, you know, you're being investigated and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Unfortunately, I didn't really have anything 
in my life that was going to be, you know, a couple in, parking tickets that yeah, I, I had never into. tried to build a tower in Russia or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> and I'm sure that, uh, you know, Ohio University was bummed to, to see you go. Um, and I, I know that you're still involved in such a way that you're Professor Emeritus. Do you think that you ever might go get back into teaching now that you're getting off of this tour? Like, what's what's next? Are you taking are, also are you taking pictures these days? Like, are you just promoting like are you are you I'm not taking enough pictures. I, I you know, I've done some some assignments here and there. Um, I, I, I HBO asked me to do this uh, assignment uh, earlier this month, but you know, I had commitments with my book tour, so I had uh -huh. to turn it down. Um, so uh, hopefully next year I'll be shooting some more. Get back. I've got a couple of things lined up. Is that the thought, getting back into the yeah. shooting game? Yeah. All right. You're not hanging up your coat. You're, you're No, no. And, well, uh, I did hang up my coat. But <laughs> Actually, I hung that up for or you. you hung it up for you me. Th you <laughs> threw it over your chair. Um, <laughs> but uh, – and then I guess uh, future – are like, are you – are you interested in potentially? Uh, no. No. <laughs> don't ask the question, or just not interested. No, I'm not interested. I, you know, it's 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 a job for a younger guy, and uh, it 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 it's hard to explain to people how much this job takes out of you. Um, Can only I mean, imagine. I sort of, all, I, you know, I was all in for eight years, and um, there, there's an enormous. Uh, um, you know, emotional to toll that it takes on your uh, personal life, and uh, I, I, I just don't think I could uh, rise to that level again. Um, people, so. people don't quite realize, and and we got. But as, in but as Rom, I was listening to, you know, Rom Emanuel, former White House chief of staff, now mayor of Chicago, who is. Uh, about to leave uh he did a podcast with axelrod the other day and and axelrod asked him uh you know are you gonna return to public service and rob's like no <laughs> and uh he said well what if you know the next president of the united states calls you up and says you know we want you to do this and you know he said that his uh his father taught him that you know you have um two answers when the president asks you a question. One is yes, the other one is yes, sir. <laughs> so so I, guess, I guess time will tell what's next for you. Um, all right, Pete. Well, you know, I think that we're, we're keeping it to an hour. We're a little bit over. So I really do appreciate you coming on. And also, for those of you that are here, there's a uh, book signing event that takes place at 5, you know, and on here at Adorama. So if you're interested, you know, you can grab a ticket comes with a copy of Shade, which we'll show one more time. Well, that's right here in front of me. Um, here it is. And uh, also, I'd love to, if you guys could all follow Photo Brigade on all the social media. Pete is you just at Pete Souza on all the platforms, right? Uh, I, I actually uh, am only on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Instagram. I, I, I gave up on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, I still have an account, but I don't. It's not like post very anything. active or whatever. It's not active at all because I don't post anything anymore. Well, you've got a, a ton of following on, on Instagram now, two, over 2 million. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing to have that, that sort of following. And, uh, you know, now you can start posting your, your pretty pics, not just um, of the. But it's still the, uh, the shade picture that, that people like. The best, I know. I mean, you know, that seems so. to, to be what's. And you've got a, a huge archive of them, millions. How many photos did you say? And, you then, and, you know, and every day it's like low-hanging fruit. I know. You know for, you know, things that are happening in, it's, in, the, in the White House. It, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like the comedians who both love it and hate it, that uh, this administration, once they lose that low-hanging fruit. Um, and you can get the book. Um, if you don't get it today at, at uh, Adorama, you can get this at, uh, what, on Amazon, any other places that you would say to get the book? So I guess uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, if you buy Michelle's book, you can get this book or the other book for 50% off. Oh, nice. So. Cool. That's Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama. All right. Yeah. Very good. All right, Pete. Thank you so much right, for, for coming down. We'll uh, see you all again next time. Take care.